This Azami strat for bank wins me 90% of my ranked game, so here's five more that are just as good. Let's get into the video. First of all, let's go over that Azami strat that I just showed you. So this Azami strat is meant to where you're able to play in Trump without having to worry about the windows here or the windows there or even the head holes there. It's a pretty good strategy, so let's get into it. The first barricade goes right here on the bookshelf. This makes it to where you can sit in Trump without having to worry about them getting on the window and shooting you. It's a pretty good strategy. The next Azami barricade is going to go on the pole that connects the chandelier to the ceiling, right about here. This Azami barricade makes it to where if you're standing inside of Trump, you don't have to worry about that window, which is really good especially in higher elo whenever people actually realize that there's a window there. This makes it to where you don't have to go around barricading all of these windows if you don't want to, it's really nice. However, if you go to the rightmost side of Trump, they can still see you, so all you have to do is double it up, and now they can't. I get kills a lot with that angle due to the fact that not a lot of people know it exists, so I always a zombie that off if I play a zombie due to the fact that I just don't want a taste of my own medicine. Now, normally, you would have a rotate to janitor right here, correct? But a lot of the times, people will get on this window here to shoot anybody rotating from janitor. So instead of wasting two reinforcements on this wall, all you have to do is put in a zombie barricade on the couch. This makes it where you can rotate safer without really having to worry about the window here. Of course, obviously, you still have to worry about these windows, but you can easily quick peek those, so that's not too terrible of an issue. What I like to do instead, though, is just barricade this off, which you can do as a zombie or any operator in the entire game. That's why you'll see a lot of castle players castle this off, so they can't just get on these windows and have a long angle into sight or into janitor. Now, the last zombie barricade is optional. You can use it to refresh the number of zombie barricades that I've already showed you, or you could use it on this couch. You put it on this couch, that way you can play inside of Trump safer, without having to worry about people on these head holes. But as a Trump player, it's kind of your job to shoot through these head holes with a long angle. So you pick your own poison here, really. You don't have to do this one. It's optional, but do it if you want to. But yeah, now they can't get on all of the main windows that they would normally get on to get to sight. Where did this Azami barricade go? Anyways, oh wait, I just realized that it broke because I hopped through the window. Oh, okay, so note to anybody watching this video, don't hop through this window uh, if you want the Azami barricade to stay alive. I think if you don't want that to happen, you might be able to put the Azami barricade on the inside of the bookshelf right here instead of the edge. That way when you hop on the right side of this window, it doesn't destroy it. Uh, but either way, that's actually bad. I didn't know that until now, so uh, never mind. <laughs> now, I love Azami on this site, but I think it's better for the more advanced players who have to worry about windows like that and windows like that. But in base elo, then this castle strat is going to be a lot better for you. Now, as castle, like I was saying, barricading one of these windows is usually pretty important. But depending on where you're going to be playing as castle is going to make a difference in which window you barricade. If you're planning on holding CEO and having a castle barricade on this double door with head holes here to watch stock, then of course you'll want to barricade this window and then just not peek the other one. But if you're playing inside of Trump like I recommend you do, then you actually want to barricade this window. So like I just said, barricade this window here. But I would actually do it from this side of the window because if you do it from the other side like I just showed you, then they can easily cook a grenade from the window and have the grenade rest on the windowsill, which makes it a lot easier for them to destroy the castle. If you, however, deploy it onto this side, they can't do that, and they have to throw a frag grenade at the floor, meaning it's a little bit harder for them to actually destroy it with a frag grenade. Next, you need a castle barricade, obviously, for this window, and for the other one as well, just because this window is such a huge threat, as well as this double door here. Now, I wouldn't recommend wasting a castle barricade on this window because the chances of somebody getting on any of these windows to shoot you are pretty low in the higher elo that you go because it's so easy to just shoot them back. So I would recommend just putting a normal barricade here. And then also you never want this window barricaded ever because mainly you use this window to rotate to banana from Trump and there's not any windows that they can get on to really shoot you whenever you're inside of Trump except for this one, but you're easily able to contest this one. So I always just leave this open. Now, this is where a lot of people disagree on where the last castle should go. Now, a lot of people put castles on this double door here, but this is really bad because it makes it to where anybody who's coming up these stairs can easily just take banana control for absolutely free because all they have to do is ADS elevator due to the fact that you have all of these windows barricaded too. So you're giving them free control if you do this. I get it makes you feel safe, but all you have to do really is take the gunfight on the staircase, so it's not that big of a deal. What other people will do is they'll put a rotate into CEO and then they'll castle off this door here. This essentially extends Trump into CEO, and if you have a reinforcement here with a mirror and then head holes next to here, you can easily hold stock. Now, this isn't a terrible strat, but what a lot of people do wrong is they don't put a rotate right here. 
if you don't put a rotate here, it makes it to where the people on marble stairs can easily walk up because all they have to worry about is the head holes and elevator. And if you don't have anybody playing elevator, then all they have to worry about is the head holes, which is really bad. But this rotate adds a new angle for them that they have to worry about. If you for sure have a person playing inside of elevator though, this isn't necessarily needed as you can just use the door to rotate anyways. But in a solo queue environment, you won't always have that. So having a rotate here to surprise people isn't a terrible idea. Now, those are two out of three different ways that you can play castle on the site, but I think both of those are actually not that viable. What I think you should do instead is put the castle barricade on the door just like this. This makes it to where if they hop in stock, which they're absolutely going to do, they have to waste utility in order to leave. And if you're in high elo, people will reinforce the right and middle wall and they'll have a deployable shield right here. So this castle barricade makes it to where they can't get flanked from inside of stock. And if you have feet holes right here, the person on this castle barricade can easily shoot anybody that comes in stock, so stock is no longer an issue if you do this strat. If you can't do this strat though, then all you need to do is castle this off and make head holes all along right here. You do that so your person in CEO can make very high holes and watch anybody hopping into stock. So it's a pretty good strategy nonetheless, and it makes it to where they can hop in stock, but if they do it, they can't leave through the doorway. So I like this castle strat a lot more. But due to the fact that everybody watching this video is in a different rank, do what best suits your rank and what you think the enemy players are going to do for you. Now we've talked extensively about upstairs strategy, so let's go down to the basement once you've inevitably won top floor. This is a cage strat, so obviously you're going to want to reinforce the hatches. You're going to get the admin hatch, and you're going to get the desk hatch in open area. Now when you get these two hatches, the cage claws that I'm putting down you might actually not expect. If you want to electrify this hatch, all you need to do is vault over this desk, and you're going to put your Cade Claw right about here. This Cade Claw will electrify the hatch flawlessly, as you can see. And if they try to EMP the hatch right here, the radius of said EMP will not get the Cade Claw, so it's EMP proof, and if you want the strat to work, all you need to do is ban Thatcher. Most attackers too will not come right to this desk, so it's a pretty free Cade Claw most of the time. The second Cade Claw, you guessed it, is going to be going in the desk, but this one is a bit more hidden. All you have to do is prone in the desk and throw your Cade Claw right here. This Cade Claw is great because attackers literally can't see it unless they're crouched and proned on the hatch, which they're never going to do because they're going to try to open the hatch before they do that. Also, it's perfectly electrified, and if they try to EMP the hatch, again, the Cade is way over there, so they're not actually going to get it. So now you have two hatches that are probably going to stay closed in most solo queue ranked lobbies. You're going to let your other two teammates get the other two hatches though because there's some site setup that you want to do as Cade. As Cade, I always love to bring the TCSG, but if you can't do that then bring the revolver to do all the site setup that I'm about to show you. The first thing is you're going to put head holes along this garage wall. You're not going to reinforce it because this is going to become very important later. You also want head holes along this wall too. This will allow you to get on this wall and hold angles onto anybody trying to get the plant down. Next, you're going to want to rotate, obviously. And then you'll want head holes along the CC wall, which in lower elo is becoming more and more common as the meta progresses to being more aggressive, but a lot of people still make the mistake of reinforcing this. You don't want to do that. Finally, you want to rotate on the left side, paired along with head height holes, just like that. You'll also want head holes here, with the optional rotate there as well. All of these holes allow you to do a lot of different things. Now, the holes that I put right here allow you to be on the bomb chassis and shoot anybody through both of the rotates on the doorway deep into server. It's a very nice pixel angle and they can't shoot you back due to the fact that you're behind a metal bomb. Now, these head holes I had you make here allow you to get a long angle onto anybody through the rotate and through the head holes for CC. So you can get a 40 meter angle all the way from vault all the way into CC. Actually, if I back up to here, you can get an even longer angle, right? And you can bring the 2x on this weapon specifically, which is why I recommended you run the TCSG. So you can really mess people up and they're not even going to know you're here. Finally, of course, you have the garage head holes and you have the head holes here. Now, this is really important that you do correctly. As Cade, within the first minute 30 of the round, you want to be playing in Garage and making sure that nobody tries to take Garage control from you. This is so that you can play in Garage and utilize these head holes and these head holes in tandem to deny anybody trying to get the bomb down when they open up this wall to get the bomb down. It works really, really well. You're able to do this for a while and you're able to switch from this to going into Vault Backsight to hold the other holes that I showed you. And as Cade, you're just going to equip the 2x scope and become a long angle holding menace with the occasional nitro cell from the door to deny anybody trying to get the plant down. Either way, this strat works really, really well as long as you know which angles to hold and you don't give up garage control for absolutely free. If you feel like you don't want to or you can't hold garage control though, then all you need to do is reinforce this wall 
have head holes here and reinforce this wall so that they can't get long angles onto you. But that's pretty much the only variance that this strat needs. It's really, really easy for you to do. You just obviously need to have the mechanics to be able to play the TCSG, which is something that's a lot easier for PC people to do. So if you're on console, you might want to not do this strat unless you're good with this weapon. Now, we've talked so much about defending strats. So let's talk about this Twitch attacking strat for basement. As Twitch, you want to spawn on the west side of the map, and the first thing that you're going to do is send a Twitch drone through this drone hole right here. When you send your Twitch drone all the way through this Twitch drone hole right here, it allows you to immediately zap the mirror that is typically on this wall, or any utility that might be here in general. You're also able to zap the default camera here as well, which is a really powerful one for defenders. Once you've done this, immediately hop your Twitch drone down into the B site. From the B site, typically there's a rotate that's right here which will allow your Twitch drone to drive through that rotate and immediately shock the other mirror. So within the first 30 seconds of the round, you already have both mirrors down. Now, typically here, your Twitch drone will get destroyed if the mirror finds it, because usually the mirror will find it after you destroy the second one. But if not, you immediately want your Twitch drone to be zapping any Cades that might be here, or any Goyos that might be here. Either way, just try to get this Twitch drone as much utility as possible. Once this Twitch drone inevitably kicks the bucket, this is where the next part of the plan comes in. As Twitch, you're now going to push with your team into the pit that they could spawn in on the east side right there. Then you're going to go into sewer and go all the way into this tunnel and then make your way into CC. Now from here, get on your Twitch drone. When you get on your Twitch drone, you're going to zap any electricity that is on this wall that's stopping any of your teammates from opening it and getting the plant down. If there isn't any, zap any traps or utility that may be on this wall, like fan rear devices, thorn traps, proximity alarms, whatever it may be. If nothing's there, then zap any of the goyos on this wall, because every single game, there will be one out of three of the things I just told you to zap in this general direction. You just want to get a Twitch drone on this side of the map, hell, you don't even need to be here, and you just want to be getting utility for your team that is going to plant the bomb over here. If your teammate's doing a backside push, same thing, just get your Twitch drone over there to help them out. You also are able to go upstairs if your team is pushing upstairs and use your Twitch drone to zap any cap can traps on doors or get any easy to get default cameras like that one. Either way, use your Twitch drones extensively to help your teammates get into the building because this is a very utility heavy site, the basement site. So you want to be using your Twitch drones to the fullest. Once you've done that, hopefully, unlike me here, you brought smokes on Twitch and you can use smokes on the bomb chassis, on the rotate, on the door to further help your team get the plant down. Overall, this Twitch strat really is to counter the two mirrors that I was talking about beforehand, but if you have a coordinated team pushing CC, you can also use Twitch Ender Smokes to help your team out too. It's a very supportistic strat that you can do very, very easily that nobody expects at all. Now, this strat is really, really basic. So let's talk about something a bit more complicated, which is this zero strat for attacking either top floor or bottom floor. It's pretty flexible. Now, I've talked about this zero strat time and time again, because it honestly is a very, very good strategy. The first thing you're going to do is repel on this window here. This is the window that I talked about in my Azami strat that a lot of people don't even know exist, where you can get an angle onto anybody inside of Trump, or anybody even in the elevator hallway. It's a really good angle that most people do not know about. When you get on this angle, after getting a kill on the windows, or maybe holding this and seeing that nobody's there, you will get your zero camera out and shoot it on the ceiling just like this. Once you're on this camera, you can see all of top lobby and bottom lobby. It's overall a great camera, and you'd be surprised at how hidden it is from most defenders, given that this is a semi-dark room and there's a lot of roof that they would have to cover in order to find the camera. Now, visibility on this camera is great, but you're also able to shock this default camera for the defenders, allowing you to have all the lobby information you want, and denying them any information that they would want to have. Next, get off of this rappel and go to the ATM doors right here and break them open. Once this door is broken in, send your drone just like this. You want to make sure that nobody is in this corner here, and you want to make sure that nobody is in this corner here. A lot of players, including me, like to hide in these corners for unsuspecting people who don't drone correctly, so just make sure you drone those corners. Once you drone those corners, again, get back on your zero cam to make sure nobody rotated into bottom or top lobby, and then you're easily able to go up the lobby stairs here. But wait, you don't want to do that yet. What you want to do is shoot a zero camera inside of tellers. This will allow you to see if there's any pulses or solaces or any roamers in general that are going to flank you from tellers whenever you're going up the staircase. It also has a dual purpose though, as you can flip the zero camera around and shoot the default camera right here and watch anybody trying to flank you from the white stairs. If you don't want to have to flip this camera multiple times though, you can just shoot one here 
and shoot a second one inside of tellers on this wall instead. And now you have a zero camera for tellers and a zero camera for these stairs too. Either way, you have zero cameras for every possible place you could get flanked and every place that you could possibly push. Now it's time to push up the stairs and deal with anybody in elevator or anybody in trunk. Or if you're doing a basement take, now you have all of your flanks covered. So it's time to get the hatch right here open with your hard breaching charges. Either way, once you have three of these cameras set up, you can initiate your plan. The last zero cam for either site is pretty optional. If you're pushing up top floor, I like to put it in this wall here, just to get any info onto anybody in sight once I flip it, just like this, or anybody inside of conference from this double door. You can use it to get utility too, but that's not really what matters with zero cameras. If you're pushing basement though, it really honestly does not matter where you put this camera, uh, just have fun with it. But, like I said, you've used your utility, it's just time to get kills now. Open up the hatch, drop down the hatch, ADS here, kill people, ADS here, kill people, and you've done your job. Same thing for top floor, walk up the lobby stairs, kill people in elevator, take control of Trump, and you can start to get really, really aggressive and get some free kills. But that's it for this video. Check out this video where I go over five Oregon strats that you need to know, and I'll see you on the next video. Later.